So uh, this morning we'll be looking at a game I played against a 5Q. Uh, I'm supposed to win this game, of course, but we'll be looking at the thinking behind the moves. And we're pretty much aiming this game at uh, 5Q to 10Q kind of thing, but seems to me everyone can learn from good thinking. Okay, here we go. I'm no white stones. Anywhere is fine, of course. Okay, here. Lots of possibilities. I'll just mark some moves that are absolutely fine. These are all, all the pinches. So these are all fine. But let's notice that in the bottom left, whoever placed first, whoever chooses the Joseki has a two to one advantage. That's no place else on the board that can happen. So it's to White's advantage to stay. And uh, which I did, and I went for the uh, stability and points. Just a second. Something to notice here. White's alive. I can play away. But I'm not comfortable. I'm not healthy. So if I were to play away, all of a sudden, Black's pressing on me. I'm crawling on the second line. Black's getting more than I am. I'm alive, but I can get hassled. So we don't want to get hassled. We want nice, healthy groups that we can use for the rest of the game. There's my alarm saying it's time to start doing what I'm doing. Uh, next thing I want to notice <coughs> is in this bottom left, uh, black has cash. White, I'm sorry, white has cash. White's points aren't going to be going away. Black does not exactly have cash, meaning, for instance, this stone's alive. So where's black's points? So the question arises, if white has real points and black doesn't, how can we call this equitable? And the answer is that uh, these white stones, especially these three, will never get used again for the rest of the game. And pretty much F3 also isn't going to be used very much, while all the black stones are going to be used. So it's all equal. Next, where for white? Let's look at all the spots again, because there's something to look at. These are all reasonable for white. Now, playing on the bottom is not reasonable because low settled groups, like my A group, has no needs. It's completely finished. Playing near it makes no sense. So the bottom's smaller than any of the other spots. Now, the upper left, which I'm now marking, like C14, black has a low settled group, but it's not all the way settled. As we saw before, white can enter at B8 or something. So it's still not biggest, but B is still possible. So I'll put a little triangle there. So the bottom's the place we don't want to play. And uh, George, the recorder, can step in at any time and make questions or comments. Sure. I played here because I like three threes, and AlphaGo says they're good, so I've been learning them more and more. <clears throat> There's a Jaseki here that players should learn. Let's look at it. There's three Jaseki. One is play here, take Sente. We'll have white play here. And black plays away. A lot of Q players aren't comfortable playing away. They play old style, which is here. It's a nice big move, but it's not necessary. AlphaGo's shown us this is a little bit slow. 
perfectly good for 10Q, 5Q, whatever. It's, you know, it's not going to lose the game, but you need to understand it's not necessary. Why is it not necessary? If a group has three options for health, it's healthy. So let's check out its three options. It can run to the side, it can run to the center, and it can run to the center. So if white it plays in any of these spots, surrounding spots, white can still just, black can still just run out. So there's no need. Taking sente is really big. So this is one of the new Jaseki AlphaGo has showed us is black can play away. Now, one change to this Jaseki is if white plays here, now we play away. Make sure you honey at R14. And again, we play away with three options. So, first choice, play here, take Sente. Next choice, play here, double Hane, take the corner. Old, old Jaseki. AlphaGo says it's wonderful. Check out the Black's got lots of points. White has almost no points, but Black invested an extra move. So the math works out perfect. It's even. Good Jaseki to know. Points, life, what's the problem? And the final one you we don't want, usually. Take a wall in Gote. In the game, black played this one and white punishes. The only time you want to do this is when you already have the extension. Then you don't mind the Gote because there's the wall is being used. But we'll see in the game that the wall is, does not get used. Okay, let's go check it out. White played here, he builds the wall. Here, I don't need to play this move. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Let's just figure out when we do. If I play away, so it's not Sente, but it's starting to cramp me and the next move is gonna be Sente. This is a big move for black on the right. Very big move. So when I play it, it's not gonna be Sente at all. So black takes it in Gote, so we play it as white. Okay, white's fine, black's fine. The two criteria to go find a big move. Biggest move is top, because black has a big old wall. Let's mention, talk about that a little bit. Black's A-stone, likes to play on the bottom, likes to play on the right. The A stone has desires, but the B wall has huge desires. It wants the top big time. So that's why the top is the biggest area. It's because someone's screaming, I want the top, I want the top. So we come along and negate it. This can be a third or fourth line. I prefer fourth in this context. George, everything making sense so far? All making sense, yeah. Good. Black approaches, reasonable. I respond here. We want to notice that fourth line here. Fourth line is a growing move. It's still invadable. What are we doing on the fourth line here? It makes no sense. So third line for stability. We could kick first, but notice how we're helping black on the left. I have no desire to help that black thing grow on the left at all. So let's not help it. Black comes into the corner. And now we're going to do a Tawari. Tawari means to change the order of the moves so we can see the position a little better. So I'm gonna take off K16. And now we're gonna say, <clears throat> now we're gonna talk about this A group. 
and say, well, you know, it doesn't actually need any help, but it would like some help. So if we're going to help it, we can help it in the corner with B, which is nice, and maybe even Sente. We can help it at top with C, which negates the wall, which is even more important. So we'd like to play at C. There it is. We already played at C. So we've defended ourselves already. We have a free move. Oh, Sente is valuable. And that wall is still meaningful. So we negate the wall again, turning into basically a stick, a target to attack. So hopefully that thinking made sense. Black comes under, and we've already defended our group. So we have Sente. We could play at A. We could play anywhere we want. But we're negating that wall. George, does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Gote. Big move, but no need to respond. We're going to continue our, our idea, peep it, and now we're going to take away, oh, I thought, here we are, we're going to take away his eyes. Take a big top area, you know, we were undercut there, and remove his eyes. The problem is it's not Sente, so it's not time to attack, we're still early in the game. So, on to another move. In this stage of the game, it's too early for, for vague attacks. I guess this might right. be an example. <clears throat> yeah, because there's still big opening moves, and they're a big priority. And we've already talked. We don't like this move. The bottom's not so big for us. So 3-3 three, three again. Nice. Take all the points. Very nice. He does his trick again, getting a wall in Gote, which is how he loses this game. He does it twice. And here's this move again. We don't need N2. So let's check it out. If we don't play and he turns, that's not big. He's getting nothing on the bottom. And we don't want to play there. We already settled. So this has become a small move. No need to play it. And I guess if White pushed one more time, Black wouldn't necessarily respond. Because the right. <laughs> because if he passes... Well, that bottom area is kind of small. He doesn't really care if we haunt it there. So we don't care if he plays there. He doesn't care if we play there. So pushing is just not important. So instead, we're going to negate his wall again. And because we have this strong group in the upper right, we can play this move, which threatens to connect under or extend. And it attacks black. This is a wonderful three-purpose move. And it has three options as well, right? Yeah. yeah. It can connect under, extend to the side, extend to the center. He stops. Our corner's fine. We're alive. We don't need to respond. So we're going to now defend our stone. We can just defend it towards the side or center. And of course, we go side first. And I think a lot of key players are going to play here, and it's not necessarily bad. But notice we're kind of behind enemy lines. And black moves like this are pretty much alive. He's going to connect one way or another. Uh, this group seems too heavy, too inside black's area. So I brought up to the fourth line just so we can run so much easier. This, this group makes me feel much better. I guess you could also consider just jumping out as you're surrounding Black. You consider just jumping out, yeah. which also hurts Black's group on top. So this one hurts the group on top. This one hurts the group on the, on the bottom. I decided this one because side before center. They're both fine, but we want to learn how to think and play basic moves. That's really how you're going to get better at Go is learn how to play basic thinking moves. And then later, when you get stronger, start changing them up. He plays this way. We have Sente. However, this is now actual Sente. 
Um, it's not that big, but it's for free. We don't want to give him this for free. So we take it away. Now all he has is Gote. It's our move again. Good time to peep, just like we did on the other group. And now, this means is the, the opening's not quite done. We have a couple open skirts. Close the skirt, attacking black. Now, I think all the Q players know this open skirt idea. See, our, he gets a go, that's, that's called the open skirt, like a little skirt, and we can open or close it, and it's removing all our eyes. So close the skirt, which hurts black. This is a um, standard way in this shape to live in the biggest way. Of course, we could also live this way, but this is, I think, one point bigger. No big deal. And if he saves a stone, well, he can't save his stone because we just capture. So we're alive there. Place here. And this is not actual Sante. Uh, but this stone is bothersome. We can survive it. We can actually kill it, but there's the Maji here. There's a ladder. I'll just show you the ladder. If he cuts, let's have him play here first. If he cuts, here's the ladder. Now the ladder works for us, but in the next 20 moves, it might not. So it kind of hangs over our head. We don't, we don't want that weakness hanging over our head. So this one move stops the ladder. Let's check out how. Sorry, black to play. There's no cuts. I mean, we'll just... There's no, the ladder's gone now. I would have thought of G3 instead, which I guess also protects... G3 is also possible. Assuming he responds, yeah, that's all taken care of. But this move uh, goes more towards the center where the game's being played. Yeah. Should we continue out? Well, notice if Black surrounds us, there's kind of, we're kind of getting to a, he's creating a large center area here. This is true, but we're kind of there already on the right we're close by on top um, maybe uh but i'm seeing his groups as weak so i really like closing this skirt and taking those eyes away this black group's really getting weak so i thought that was uh, uh much more valuable than his center also i would call this center while his move is not. But they're both playable, I would say. He does his tricks over here. He tries a couple things that don't work. Is this a bot, Lance? Is this what? Is this a bot you're playing? Uh, yes, I think it is, yeah. Okay. And he defends. Something to notice. <clears throat> I attacked with A. He defended with B. Couple moves in between, but that's the end result is I attacked with A. He defended with B. Now we ask, how many points, what did, what, what's the value of A? I don't know, 10 points? More than 10? Because if Black took those away, he would be getting points. So 10, 12, even 14 points. How big is B? Not even one point yet. So his weakness has just netted me just in this local sequence over 10 points. So that's why this is why we don't like our groups getting weak because it gives the other person free points. 
This is one of the basic premises of Go is don't have weak groups. It's interesting because now I guess you'd say that white has a big advantage over black, but I guess a weaker player would find that very difficult to see. Uh, yeah. First, just the count, white's 15 to 20 points ahead. Yeah. Uh, that's nice. Uh, secondly, black still has weak groups, mm -hmm. while white doesn't at all. So, big difference, yeah. So, what does white do with his move? Um, <clears throat> there's a few things, a few ways to, to think about it. One way is, how can white lose this game? Well, if black enters in, we can sort of imagine the A side becoming weak and actually the B side becoming weak. This is not hard to imagine because there is a gap there and we've ignored some moves there. That's really the only spot. So I start tidying it up, give myself some points and some eyes. Seems pretty straightforward. And I guess that's starting to open up C12 a little. There's a bit of RG there now. Uh -huh. I guess. Yeah. yeah, if black doesn't respond, I'm get on the right button here. Then these moves start becoming more interesting. Black does respond, so he's stronger. I have this if white comes here I'm creating a weak group. And there's no need to because I'm already ahead. So let's check this out. I'm gonna move that A over to here. Okay, I have a weakness around A. I start tidying it up. His move brings A back where, oh, that I I just created may be going away. But I've already strengthened this shape, so I don't need to descend. Instead, I can start growing. So now I'm going to give black those, it's going to be about six points, and I'm going to take 10 to 15 points. This is a good example of why reducing is bigger than invading. Okay, I just created how many points a day? Gosh, 10 to 15. It's a pretty big area. How many did he get? Six? Eight? So already a gain for white. This is one of my personal weaknesses. I always invade or used to always invade when I should be reducing. Yeah, and, and also I guess, I mean, you, you had quite a weakness there that you've also covered up, which is... Um, uh, yeah, my weakness is completely gone, yeah. 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 I uh, <clears throat> played a game against a 9 Don Pro years back, and uh, he had a Moyo, and I invaded. I was so proud of myself. I went to the big Moyo, I invaded big time, created a co, I won the co, I was so proud of myself. And um, in review, the pro says, why did you invade? And I lost the game, duh. He says, why did you invade? And there was a eight Don amateur watching the game. And he says, it never would have crossed my mind to invade reduction simply bigger and that was huge my my living inside was huge but he in sente he got all the way around plus the two extra moves because of the co this is re reducing is much bigger that was meant a lot to me that that was kind of a turning point in me not in me losing that bad habit that's pretty much from here we're just in in game and there's, everyone's fine now, all the groups are fine, it's just tidying up. And let's talk a little bit about why it's in-game. Um, there aren't going to be any invasions around A, that's unreasonable. There's no invasions around B, that's unreasonable. I mean, all the areas are decided. Okay, Han, have a good walk.
So the question is, for instance, in area one, oh, that's white's area. How much of it is whites? That's what we're going to decide. Uh, area two, that's black's area. How much of that is black's area? Well, that's what we're going to be deciding. How much of area three is blacks? I can reduce it. He can grow it, but it's already blacks. So we're in end game. Okay, that ends this game. Um, we'll probably have it uploaded so you can look at the rest of it yourself. And hopefully you can get around the thinking of why I made the moves I made. And they seem to me to be very simple moves and very simple thinking, something you can adopt and get stronger in. George, you have any uh, comments before we end this game? No, that was great. Thank you. Okay, good.